Danielle, tell us a little about your career journey. What is it that's made you so successful in your career? Uh, I think that's a great question. I, I will say I think sort of the, the factors that drove my career started really early on. I grew up in Big Sur, which is the central coast of California. And for those who know it well or remember it maybe from the 60s and 70s, it was sort of the, the root, the hub of the human potential movement. So I think just growing up in a community that was very thoughtful about what it means to be a good human being and sort of what our obligations and responsibilities to other human beings are was, was huge for me. Went off to college on the East Coast, and, and when I got there, a couple of things really struck me about the experience that influenced sort of my career and choices. One, I became very involved in leadership for the first time ever, and so that was a great sort of laboratory to experiment with leadership and leadership styles and approaches and sort of figure out my, my interest and what I bring to the table. Also, I became really interested in um, learning more about sort of um, the, the privileges that came from, from having an education, you know, if you think about it, I think now that I've graduated, I almost take it for granted, right? But it's college is four years that you just get to, you know, sit around and think and write and discuss with others. And I just realized how much that affected my life outcomes in really meaningful ways and that, you know, not everybody has that opportunity. And so I felt it made me feel like such a strong sense of responsibility, um, you know, towards people who maybe didn't have those opportunities or who should, but, but weren't yet. So I joined Teach for America after college, which was kind of a great sort of mesh of this, you know, sort of experimenting in leadership, but also getting interested in education as a means to equalizing the playing field. And I actually taught special education right down the road in San Jose, California, from where I am today. It was great, taught for a couple of years. And the really innovative and neat thing about Teach for America is that their whole teaching model is very much a leadership model. They see teachers as leaders in the classroom, leaders of instruction, leaders of you know, culture, behavior. And so I learned a tremendous amount from from that experience and worked really hard. <laughs> I learned also that teaching, you know, is, is not as easy as I think I initially thought it would be and certainly had some some great challenges and great successes. And and I loved it. And by the end of my two year commitment with them, I decided I really wanted to get a look at social change through another lens at a different perspective. I felt like I had a really good sense of what it looked like on the ground, but wanted to understand it from a, you know, the sort of policy and, um, you know, system arena. So I did a PhD at Stanford in political science, came here, another great experience, learned a ton, met fantastic leaders as I had in Teach for America, and was constantly along the way sort of very intrigued and interested in these people, you know, sort of taking notes on, on what made them successful. And when I'd meet Every once in a while, I'm sure you've had this experience too, you just meet those really incredible people who knock your socks off. They're like high achieving, but also super balanced, um, seem very fulfilled, have positive relationships. And I was like, you guys, you know, I'm interested in you. How do you do it? So I'd always, you know, take them out for coffee or, you know, you know, see if I could ask them questions and people were really generous with their time. So, so I finished up my program at Stanford and then kind of had to decide what to do next. And I wanted something that built on the leadership and management skills I'd developed, you know, through the course of my career thus far, but also that really helped me hone those analytical and data skills that I'd gotten in grad school. And so that's a rare combination. I think people were like, you know, you're not going to find that. It really so, is. <laughs> it is very strange. There was, I think, one job in the world at the time uh, that, that, that needed both of those things. And, and luckily, it was right nearby at the Carnegie Foundation, so just up the hill. It was an education nonprofit. So I went to work for them, and then within a year, I moved into the chief of operations role, um, which was a great honor and incredible experience. And, and I was very young. I think I was 30 at the time when that happened. So then I did that for a few years, loved it, and met even more incredible people um, throughout, throughout that experience. And then got to the point eventually where I'd, I'd I met so many interesting people, I was constantly taking notes and thinking about, you know, what can I learn from them, that people started asking me, well, how would you handle this, or what do you think they'd do, or, you know, what is your advice on this situation, and it got me really thinking about my, my impact in the world, um, and, and what I wanted to do, and how I could optimize my impact, and I think uh, I started to really consider carefully what that meant for me. And so I decided to leave Carnegie to write a book, and the book kind of spiraled into consulting, which spiraled into the Center for Advancing Leadership and Human Potential, what I do now. Um, but it was, it was sort of a, a whole bunch of interesting factors that just all came together to lead me to this moment. And then in terms of, of what I learned from the experience, um, or, or what, what contributed, I think, to my you know, being successful to the degree that I was at these, 
I think a couple of things. Um, one, I'd say grit, which maybe you've heard of. It's kind of popular right now yeah. right? In, the, in the educational psychology literature. I think people think grit as like perseverance, um, which is a, a huge piece of it. But it's not just perseverance. It's also passion for long-term goals. So it's that perseverance piece, but passion put together um, that keeps you really motivated through hard times. And for me, I don't know that that necessarily came naturally. I don't know. Maybe it does for some people. Maybe you have to you know, work to, to learn it and really master it. But I feel like I'm still working at it. But I think having grit helped me really overcome um, big challenges and just get through generally you know, difficult things. And I think other than that, um, and this is why I'm so excited to be talking with you today at Sarder, because I think I'm just a naturally curious person who's really interested in always learning. And I think many times because of that curiosity, I maybe ventured off on paths that, that didn't seem logical at the time or, or weren't related to anything specifically, but I was interested in them. And that later, a lot of those paths sort of, like I said, collided together in really important and meaningful ways, but I couldn't have known that at the time. So just like not being afraid to explore a little bit.